Hi, you're watching BK Hobby and the Open Hub Basic Series. Last time we left off learning about creating items and links which allow us to store the state of things in their channels in our Open Hub system. If you haven't seen the previous videos yet, I recommend you start by going to the playlist I've linked to here and watch the entire Open Hub Basic Series to catch up. In this video, we'll move on to the fun part of setting your Open Hub system up, the user interface. This is the most rewarding part of your configuration because you'll actually get to see real-time results of all your work until now and interact with your home animation things directly via the user interface. So at the end of the previous video, I showed you a sample of my favorite user interface, the Hab Panel. Hab Panel is the most touch-friendly and easily configurable user interface in OpenHab. And it doesn't require anything more than what you've done so far, that is, creating the items for your thing channels. That's because Hat Panel interfaces directly to the items using widgets. There are many types of widgets, and they use items to show things like the state of your HVAC system temperature, or to control the color of your lamp. If you had nothing but computers and touchpads controlling your home automation system, you could easily get away with only using Hat Panel. However, Hat Panel is definitely best suited for large displays and may not be the best user interface for something like your phone screen. For the phone screen, there are much better options like the basic or classic UI. What you're seeing here is the basic UI. And I won't focus on the classic UI in this video because both are extremely similar in design and configuration and only slightly different in the look and feel. Both the basic UI and the classic UI do not interface directly to your items, like Hat Panel does. Instead, these user interfaces depend on a configuration file called a sitemap. Sitemaps define the layout and handling of items for the user interface and tell the basic or classic UI how to interact with your items. Take a look at this layout of my basic user interface. This is my home or top level layout of the basic UI. My items are grouped into different sections based on things like location, first floor, second floor, garage, based on function, like my thermostat, and general status information. If you notice, this layout is pretty similar to the demo user interface you installed if you followed my steps in the original OpenHabian configuration video. As I've said before, the way that basic user interface looks is defined by your sitemap file. The sitemap file lets you organize your items into meaningful sections and use specific user controls for each item. For example, the sitemap file will let you define how to show a number item, whether you want to use a switch to select an audio input source to your whole house amplifier, or a selection menu for one of the many possible effects on your holiday light LED strip. You can also hide different items under their own sections. Take a look at the island light section in my kitchen. In the items and links video, I showed you how I grouped the three different lights into a single group dimmer item. Normally, I will want to use the single group dimmer item to control all three lights. For the few occasions where I want to control each single light individually, I can click on the individual lights element and my basic UI will switch to a new screen which shows me only the three lights that make up my kitchen island group. My sitemap allows me to do this. I would much rather hide these three individual light items on their own subsection of my user interface rather than clutter my screen with all of the items shown at once. So now let's look at my actual sitemap definition file. Just like the rest of the OpenHab configuration files, the .sitemap files live underneath the OpenHab config file directory. And just like with items files, you can have multiple sitemap files. However, when you configure the user interface on your phone or the paper UI, you will have to select only one of those files to show up. The way you do this is by opening up paper UI, clicking on the configuration section, the services page, and the UI tab. Click on the configure link on the basic UI item, and in the dialog window that pops up, fill in this default sitemap setting with the name of your sitemap file without the .sitemap extension, and hit save. You will notice that I have nothing configured for this in my system. That is because if you do not change the name of your default sitemap, and it is still named default.sitemap, OpenHab will use it as the UI sitemap automatically. Every sitemap file has to start with the opening definition of a sitemap. The second argument on this line is the actual sitemap name that OpenHab will use to identify it. The label is how you name the sitemap for yourself. I labeled mine simply with home, and that's what shows up in the title bar of my user interface. 
The rest of the sitemap file has to be written within these opening and closing brackets. If you've been following this series from the start, I recommend that you install OpenHab with the demo configuration. If you did this, you already have a complete sitemap defined and you can use it to modify it into your own design or just play with it and see how your changes affect the look of the user interface. If you're starting out from scratch, you'll want to find out about all the different possible elements you can use in your sitemap definition. The best resource for this is the OpenHab documentation, which I'll link to in the video description. Now, I will go over the basic components you can use in your sitemap and show you examples of how they work to build up a fully functional user interface. Switch is the most basic and easiest element to show you first. It's exactly what you expect, and it ties to the switch item directly. Notice that all I had to do to bring in the switch item into my sitemap was call the switch element and link it to the proper item. I didn't even have to define the text to show in the user interface. That's because the user interface will pull that information directly from the item definition, including any formatting I configure in the items file. Slider is most often used for dimmer items or things like lamp brightness or audio volume. Text is a very versatile sitemap element that can display the string value from any item. For example, I have text elements in my sitemaps showing things like room temperature, humidity values, or the date and time. Of course, you can format the string using all available string formatters. With this sitemap definition for the sunrise time, notice that I also have defined a specific icon showing the sun. You can define your own icons for the sitemap file separate from the items definition. The sitemap icon definition will override your item definition. The list of available system icons is the same as I showed you in the items video, but you can also add your own. Set point elements are useful for number items that require a precise selection within a small range. The best example of that is a thermostat heating set point. Set point elements show up as numerical values with up and down buttons to allow you to modify the value. With these, you can also define the range you want to allow for your set point as well as the step value. In my case, for the heating set point, I have a minimum value of 45 degrees Fahrenheit, a maximum value of 80, and a step of 1 degree. With these settings, the user interface will allow me to set the heating set point within the range of 45 and 80, and the value will change by 1 degree every time I press the up or down push button. Color picker elements are used with color items and allow you to select a hue, saturation, and intensity of your color light bulbs or LED strips. The down and up arrows are similar to the set point element and allow you to change the lamp brightness without opening up the full color picker control. Selection elements are great for number items with more than about five options. My LED strips have over 30 possible effects so far and I'm always looking to add more. There's no way I could fit all of these items on a single line switch like my audio source input switch. The selection element keeps all of the effects in one menu that pops up when I click on it. At this point, I also want to show you one very useful feature of sitemap files and something that was requested I talk about in some comments on the previous video. That is the mappings element parameter. I mentioned that the selection element modifies a number item, but what you see in the menu that pops up is human readable text corresponding to each available effect. I would rather see an informative text telling me that I'm about to select the hue breathe effect as opposed to seeing a number like 32, which means nothing to me. In order to allow this, I need to define a mapping between the selection menu items and the values that each selection will send to the number item. In the sitemap element definition, you can define the mapping by opening up a square bracket, typing in the value that you want to send, an equal sign, and the label you want to show to the user. And repeat this for all the values that are possible to select, separated by commas. Close the square bracket to complete the mapping. Now, when you select the informative and readable juggle menu option in your user interface, OpenHab will use the sitemap mapping to send the value of 9 to the LED strip effect number item. You can use mappings with other sitemap elements, as you may have already seen before on this audio source switch element, where I map the possible currently connected audio input sources to their correct values in the switch element mapping. Now, instead of having to choose a number 5 and knowing it's my Chromecast input, I can use a more informative label on the switch element, which will send the value of 5 to my mono price amp audio source number item. Group elements are great for dropping a full set of items into your sitemap file with a single line. For example, I'll just add the group sitemap element with the second floor master group item 
and all of the items, including subgroups that belong to this group, are going to be added to the user interface using the default sitemap elements for each item type. One thing to consider when using the group sitemap element is that you won't be able to modify any of the parameters, including icons or mappings, of the group members within your sitemap. So if I wanted to make some modifications to a volume slider icon or map my audio input sources within the kitchen group items, I can't just add the kitchen group to my sitemap. Instead, I have to add all the items within that group to my sitemap individually. And now the frame element. Up until now, every sitemap element I showed you required an item to be defined for it. However, frame is a specific type of sitemap element, which does not require an item. Frame elements are used to lay out and organize other sitemap elements into sections within your user interface. For example, you can see how my sitemap file is made up of three major frame elements. The first frame contains my house area group items, like the attic, first and second floors, and outdoors. All of the items I define within the frame element, that is between the opening and closing brackets, will be grouped into their own section, as you can see on my user interface. For the second frame, which contains my thermostat elements, you can see I also added a label field. I can use the label field as a title for my specific sitemap section. As you can see, the thermostat label shows up as a big title for the thermostat section in my user interface when I use the label field on the frame element. As you have also already seen, user interfaces are not limited to a single page. You can easily create nested, multi-level interfaces. Let me show you an example. As we saw earlier, I had a group dimmer for my kitchen island lights on the main kitchen page, but also another element which opens up a new page with the individual island light sliders. I did this by adding a text element to my kitchen sitemap page, opening up the curly brackets, and putting the additional slider elements within the brackets. You can nest these text or group elements as you wish to create multi-level user interfaces like I showed you here. So now that I've shown you the different sitemap elements and how to use them, let me also quickly show you some nifty ways to pretty up your user interface with these additional element options. The first two are label color and value color. Both allow you to change the color of the label or the value based on conditions like the value of the item or even other item states. For example, I have these thermostat heat and cool set point labels set to turn red or blue, depending on their function and based on the value of the set point. In this case, the heat set point value and label are set to always turn red when the value is greater than zero. This outside temperature value color is modified using the state of the weather underscore last update item. This item stores the length of time elapsed since the outside temperature item was last updated and the value color option changes the color of the sitemap value depending on that length of time. Basically, you can use this to show if a value you're looking at is stale or if it's been recently refreshed. Check out all of these ranges and possible colors. You can use all logical operations here. For example, the greater than, less than signs, or use the double equal signs for conditional true or false statements. But I think one of the coolest modifiers to use is the visibility option. Sometimes you just don't want to see all of the sitemap elements unless a specific switch is on or another condition is true. For example, my mono price amp allows me to set the input source, set or mute the volume and other options per zone. But if that zone is turned off, I don't need to see those additional settings in my sitemap. So in my user interface, if I have the office audio zone turned off, I only see that switch and the rest of my office items on the sitemap. As soon as I turn the zone on, all of the remaining sitemap elements and audio zone settings show up. Pretty cool, right? The way to do this in the sitemap file is very easy. Just add the visibility option to each sitemap element you want to hide and use a conditional statement to check the item you want to use to show or hide those elements. In my case, I'm checking whether the model price zone corresponding to my office is set to on. Notice, this is the same item I'm switching with the power switch element above and only showing these three items if the power switch item is set to on. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to use these options in your own sitemap. For example, you could use the visibility option to show an alarm condition on your sitemap, but only if the value of the alarm status item is set to a particular state. So 
We've reached the end of another section of this tutorial series. By now, if you've watched all of the videos in the playlist, you should have a really good idea of how to configure your OpenHAP system for controlling your home's smart devices. In the next video of this series, we'll start looking at rules, which will allow you to do actual automation tasks, like turning on some of your interior lights when the sun sets. If you like these videos or are interested in some of the other topics on my channel, please subscribe, hit the notification icon, and check some of these other videos out. I have also created a Discord server so that we can have live discussions, troubleshooting, and a way for everyone to share their knowledge and ideas when it comes to DIY, electronics, or home automation topics. I'll post a link to the server in the description below, so please go ahead and join, and let's build a great community of home automation enthusiasts together. Thanks for watching my videos, and until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.